Excellent. Welcome to the Metasploit team demo meeting. Uh, this is part of our fully distributed edition. We hope everyone is, is being well and safe these days. Uh, we, a lot of us find ourselves working at home. I enjoyed this joke a lot more, I think, than other people did, but I felt like including it. So, top in. We have some new modules. We've got nine to be exact, eight of which will get you command or code execution on the target. And we also have one denial of service module. Super cool. Community contributor Viking FR provided a new module chaining together two exploits for R config, which is an open source network device configuration management tool. First, this module uses an SQL injection to create a temporary admin user, and then follows that by authenticating as that new user to exploit an unsanitized path parameter via GET request to achieve command and code execution on a vulnerable target. Neat stuff. We'll have a demo of this actually, which is cool. Our own William Boo added a new module for exploiting a Java deserialization vulnerability in Manage Engine Disk Desktop Central, an endpoint management tool for managing systems and devices on a network. Specifically, this module utilizes deserialization of untrusted data and the target's Git chart image functionality, leading to remote code execution on the target as the system user. And we'll have a demo of this one as well. And from contributor Tim Wright comes two new modules targeting 64 bit Google Chrome browser. The first module targets Chrome versions 67, 68, and 69 and exploits a type confusion vulnerability in Chrome's just-in-time compiler via object create to store shellcode into a writable and executable region of a WebAssembly object and then execute it. The second module targets Chrome versions 72 and 73 and uses heap correction to modify the contents of an existing typed array, which itself can be used to read and write arbitrary memory. The module then uses WebAssembly to allocate a region of read, write, execute memory where it stores the payload and executes it. While both of these modules currently only work if the target Chrome is not running with sandboxes enabled, they do both work across different target OSs such as Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, and they do not require authentication. Good stuff. And community contributor Air Evan added a module which exploits a backdoor and vulnerable versions of PHP Study, which is a program integration package for a PHP debugging environment that includes PHP, Apache, MySQL, and other packages. At some point, a bad actor or actors snuck in this backdoor to the PHP Study software, which enables a specially crafted HTTP GET request to gain code execution of a base64 encoded payload. And as you might expect, no authentication required. Cool. And uh, some more new modules here. Contributor Eric Winter added a new module targeting vulnerable versions of Nagios XI, specifically anything prior to version 5.6.6. .6. Provided with credentials for an account with permissions to modify plugins, this module will upload a malicious plugin to the target and trigger code execution via a specially crafted HTTP request. Pretty cool. Community contributor Mechala added a new module targeting Centrion, which is an open source IT monitoring solution. Providing this module with credentials that have privileges for managing Centrion pullers on the target will yield command and code execution. Neat. Our own Spencer McIntyre added a new module targeting a .NET serialization vulnerability in the SQL Server Reporting Services, or SSRS, application. Vulnerable versions contain a class which will load and execute serialized data submitted via a post request leading to code execution on the target as the same service as user as the SSRS application is running as. Note that this module does require credentials with the browser role at a minimum. And we'll have a demo of this, I believe. Community contributor Ismail Tazdelin provided a denial of service module targeting Tautuli, a Plex media server monitoring tool. For, for vulnerable version installations of Tautuli, the module initiates a shutdown via GET request to the slash shutdown URI. It's pretty effective. And as usual, we have a lot of other valuable work going on uh, outside of modules, including a number of workflow and quality of life improvements this cycle. Our own Alan Foster updated the framework console to display a useful productivity to display useful productivity tips on launch, which you can also view via the new tips command. Uh, and I believe we'll have a demo of this. And Alan also cut down the amount of delay when an invalid or unknown command is entered before the console prompt is returned from two seconds to one second. That's nice. Alan also added new Rubo RuboCop format rules to allow use of RuboCop's autocorrect function via RuboCop's dash A command line option. 
to automatically format modules in a consistent fashion, which can be handy for anyone creating new Metasploit framework modules. Uh, good stuff. And future iterations of these rules will support automatic code suggestions and PRs as well. Pretty nifty. Uh, our own Will Vu added filtering to the MSF Venom list option to filter results by platform and architecture, which can be handy when searching for a payload appropriate for a specific target. Dig it. Will also added hex no slashes as a valid mode for URI encoding, taking advantage of existing functionality and exposing it to framework users via the data store options within the UI. Nice. Uh, we also had contributor Tim Wright added the PSH AMSI bypass URI option to the web delivery module, supporting persistence between runs, which is cool. And a couple of enhancements to allow users and contributors to work smarter, not harder. Our, our own Dean Welch updated results tracking in the JSON RPC to support disposal of old results in favor of lower memory usage. It's good. And our own Alan Foster added memory and CPU profiling tools via memory profiler that's a memory underscore profiler and Ruby dash prop gems, respectively, for analyzing frameworks usage of those resources. Insight for the win, yeah. And some bug fixes. A uh, number of bug fixes here. Community contributor Tico Fu fixed a bug in the OWA login module to prevent it from failing when the off time option is set to false. I appreciate that. Community contributor T0N1 fixed a bug in the exchange GCP view state module to properly use the vhost value. This allows Metasploit to exploit targets where IIS has a host name specified in the binding section of the web application's configuration. Good stuff there. And community contributor got milk fixed a no method error found in the post Windows Manage Migrate module. I appreciate those fixes. Contributor Tim Wright fixed a missing argument error in the shell command for Windows Meterpreter. Uh, and our own Spencer McIntyre resolved the missing argument bug in the Windows Meterpreter, ensuring commands like PowerShell shell and the play command work correctly. So good stuff. And our own Will Vu fixed a bug involved in the tool workflow, which generates the data files for why so serial Java payloads. Appreciate that. And a bonus slide. Uh, so we've we've been talking about the attacker KB uh, for a little bit in these 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 meetings now. Um, it's we, you know, the beta is ongoing at this point. Uh, attack, it's a if you don't know, Attacker KB is a new resource to highlight hacker community knowledge on which bones matter most and why. If you're interested in participating in the beta, Caitlin put up an informative blog post link there on the slide with more details about Attacker KB and info on how to sign up if you'd like to throw your hat into the ring for beta participation. And for details on recent framework activity, you can always check out the weekly Metasploit wrap up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And we do appreciate all of y'all help make Metasploit better through your contributions to the project. Thank you for that. And with that, time for demos. Christoph. So this module is an exploit for SQL Server reporting services. Um, it is a view state deserialization issue. So for this, you need the service, obviously the service running on your SQL Server and uh, at least an account with uh, the browser role, which is low privilege. It's not, you don't need a high privilege account, right? So let's look at the options. Um, so you will need to set up the password and the username of this account and the remote host, remote port, anything related to the payload um, and that's it. So the check method is checking if the service is actually running. Uh, it's not checking the version because it's not, uh, there's no way to um, check this remotely. So at least you know that the service is running and you can run the exploit. Here you go. We have a session and the context of the application that is executing the payload is anti-service report server, right? There we go. And that's it. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Christoph. So the Manage Engine Desktop Central Java Deserialization. Spencer, are you on? Yes, I am. Uh, can I share my screen? Absolutely. Let me stop mine. There you go.
Okay, yeah, so the uh, module that I'm going to be demonstrating is a uh, leveraging a Java deserialization vulnerability within the desktop central uh, application. Uh, what's interesting about uh, this vulnerability is that when it was uh, disclosed on uh, March 5th, it was actually unpatched at that time. Um, it has been patched uh, since then, um, but it was a, a zero day as of, what was that, just about 19 days ago. Um, so that was pretty interesting. Um, the check method that's implemented is going to go ahead and it's going to verify that the service is running and it's going to pull the version number and compare that uh, to the version in which it was patched to be able to identify whether or not um, the application is vulnerable. Uh, one of the nice things about this module is that we have uh, multiple target options that are available to us. You can see right here down towards the very bottom, we have the PowerShell stager is the one that's being used. So that's going to go ahead and upload our native uh, stager and execute that within the context of PowerShell without writing anything to disk. Um, now, it's kind of often uh, noticed on penetration tests and those types of environments that sometimes modules, or excuse me, not modules, PowerShell is disabled. So we also have the ability to go ahead and use a Windows dropper or a uh, Windows command alternatively. This module is a little bit finicky sometimes. Uh, the first time it's run, it does uh, tend to fail, uh, but then running it a second time, it generally works pretty consistently, and that's noted uh, within the module docs. Uh, successful exploitation uh, results as code being executed within the context of NT authority system. Thank you. Nice. I appreciate the demo, Spencer. Thanks, man. And some productivity tips from our own Alan Foster. Alan, you on? Uh, yep. Uh, so yes, uh, now whenever you load Metasploit, we now offer useful productivity tips. Um, so hopefully this will improve the discoverability of some of uh, Metasploit's awesome features. Um, the arrow pointing to a potential tip that you may receive. Uh, you'll receive a different one on each opening. And if you go to the next slide, um, you can also uh, call the tip command individually to see one command at a one tip at a time, or you can use the tip tac l, uh, which will give you all of the current tips. And please send any pull requests for any useful tips that you would like to contribute as well. Yeah, I dig that. Cool. I think Squiggy sent some this morning. <laughs> Love it. Dig it. Cool. Any any. Other questions or comments for Alan on that? If not, we'll, we'll, we'll hit the next thing. You ready, Alan? Yep. All right. Demo so of the rconfig. Yep, rconfig 3.9 RCE. I currently have uh, rconfig opened up in the background. Uh, you can see I'm loading the rconfig module. I'm setting off the normal options. And I'm running the exploit. And what this is doing behind the scenes is uh, relying on two different vulnerabilities. It's using SQL injection to create a admin account. Uh, and then it's relying on uh, command injection vulnerability via the path parameter of Ajax archive files uh, within the rconfig web interface. And this was a user contributed module as well. And you can see that I've got a shell and can call the normal functions you'd expect. Neat. Any awesome. questions for Alan? Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, thank you for the demo. I appreciate it. Thanks. Excellent.